Uh, special part of the evening now, we've reached the, uh, the Hall of Fame inductions. Uh, to present this uh, is Ross Burridge and Colin McNiff. Please welcome them to the stage. Thanks, Matt. It's uh, just reflecting on a couple of things. It's 19 years that we started the Hall of Fame off, and I took this to the, the Tasmanian Racing Club Committee 19 years ago. It doesn't, only seems like yesterday, and the, the whole reason was that we was to celebrate participants in the industry from, from you know, way back to the current day. And um, Kerry, just when you mentioned Billy Pettit, I knew Billy Pettit since I was this big, and uh, I'll come and see you in a minute because. Um, and Billy's wife taught me at school. That's how, uh, that's in, so it's a small world. Um, but it, when you look at the back of that awards program tonight, it's, um, it's really quite an honour roll of people that have been inducted over the last 19 years. Now, just a couple of little housekeeping matter on the um, Hall of Fame. It's horses, jockeys, trainers and associates. And every now and then we have a legend. So, um, We've made one change to the selection panel. R Ronnie Riley came on for Greg Mansfield this year. Uh, Greg's now in Western Australia. And every year now, we're just gonna do two. Two of those four every year, and maybe a legend. So we've got two inductions tonight, and we've got one uh, elevation to legend status. So uh, I'm gonna um, talk about the inductee, and then Colin will come and read the, uh, all the details of it. So our first inductee tonight, um, when you're as old as me, you can remember this horse um, running and Ronnie Riley rode him. Uh, and that's not the reason he went in, but he um, he's a very well performed horse in the 1970s, and it was Glenn Lang. The owners and breeders of Glenn Lang were Owen Scott and Jared Highland, and they were first cousins. They formed a racing and breeding partnership and sent Blue Neon to Lanesborough. Glenn Lang raced in Tasmania and Victoria. Hall of Fame trainer Bill Bullen trained Glenn Lang all of his career at Mowbray and Flemington, where Bill borrowed a stable from Pat Courtney. Glenn Lang's racing career, 39 starts, 11 wins, second, uh, seven seconds and four thirds. And uh, he won from 1,000 metres up to 2,000 metres, placed at 12 furlongs, ran second in what is now the Group 2 Herbert Power Handicap. He won races uh, at Elwick, he raced at Caulfield, Mooney Valley, Werribee. He ran second in the Werribee Cup. He also ran in the Melbourne Cup, but finished down the track. And uh, Glenn Lang inducted into the Hall of Fame. And Ross, to accept the award, Michael Scott. Thanks very much, Ross, and thanks very much to the Hall of Fame Selection Committee. Glenn Lang's obviously a, a very, very special horse in my family. As was just said, um, Glenn Lang was raced in partnership between my father, Owen Scott, and his first cousin, Gerald Highland. Owen sends his apologies tonight. He's now 92 years of age and doesn't get out as much. So I guess I get to speak on his behalf. Gerald Highland was a, a racing man and uh, on the advice of Hall of Fame trainer Bill Bullen, he purchased some yearlings in Melbourne, one of which was a filly. That filly was injured when she came back from Melbourne. Gerald didn't know quite what to do, so he spoke to his uncle who suggested that uh, Dad, being a really good horseman, would be a good, um, I guess, custodian of the, the filly. And he obviously rehabilitated the filly and she went on to, to race. That filly was the dam of Glen Lang. Gerald and Dad decided to take her to Lanesborough, Hall of Fame inductee, as we know. 
Gerald had been quite successful as a, an owner in his own right. He won the 1966 Hobart Cup with Sailing Prince. Unfortunately, Gerald never saw a Glen Lang race in Melbourne. Gerald passed away on Melbourne Cup Day 1970. Dad had always been really good with horses. He was successful in winning the local country cup in 1952 as an owner, trainer and amateur jockey. So Dad had actually pre-trained Glen Lang before his campaigns. And as we know, he was trained by Hall of Fame trainer Bill Bullen. I won't bore you with too many details about the horse because there's a lot to tell, but as we know, a horse has all sorts of bad luck. Sometimes they never reach the race course. Sometimes when they do, they have bad luck. Glenn Lang had a really almost a near-death experience as a foal. Dad, had, Dad and Gerald had taken the mare back to Lanesborough to get in foal again. In February 1967, the day before the bushfires, Dad decided to go and pick up the mare and foal. So Glenn Lang missed by 24 hours the bushfire that took out the stud. Glenn Lang's first trip to Melbourne, they decided to fly him. So they put him on an aircraft at Launceston Airport. Unfortunately, Glenn Lang really resented that flight. He played up really badly and he almost had to be put down. But he got there and he subsequently went on to win those races in Melbourne. I'd just like to pay a tribute to Launceston veterinarian, Dr. Stephen King. Glenn Lang was not a sound racehorse, despite all of his performances. Steve King had identified something called navicular disease, which was quite difficult to treat back in the early 70s. It's a lot easier now with, with modern drugs, etc. So it was through Steve King that they were able to manage that, that problem. I was talking about bad luck. Glenn Lang raced in the 1972 Caulfield and Melbourne Cups. In the Caulfield Cup, he was badly interfered with and was knocked back to almost the back of the field. But he still came home faster than any horse in the race and finished eighth. The story goes that Roy Higgins was on Gun Sind in that race and he realised that the horse travelling next to him was travelling better than Gun Sind. And that was Glenn Lang. So he thought that that horse would finish in front of Gun Sind. Gun Sind was actually third in that race. So if that story is true, Glenn Lang could have been placed in the Caulfield Cup, but that's racing, as they say. I'll just finish off by talking about racing royalty. In April 1970, Queen Elizabeth II visited Tasmania and she attended the race meeting at Mowbray. It's interesting, on that day, there were two other Lanesborough horses racing. One was Beer Street, and the other one was Piping Lane. Now, as we know, later in 1970, Beer Street went on to win both the Herbert Power Handicap and the Caulfield Cup. And Piping Lane obviously won the 1972 Melbourne Cup, which Glen Lang also participated in. All three horses, all three of those Lanesborough Colts, were all born within 10 days of each other. I'm not sure what that means, but that's my story. Thanks very much. <laughs>